Yo, what is up, guys, and welcome to this video. I'm going to start off with a quote from Rock Lee. A dropout will be the genius through hard work. And that's from Rock Lee. Just look at this badass. Okay, so today we're going to work with some vertical and horizontal axes. Um, we're basically going to implement some movement uh, for our character player. So let's just start off. We're going to work with some, yeah, uh, the vertical horizontal axis. Uh, rigid body. We're going to uh, work with, uh, with a function uh, called inside the rigid body and last but not least we're going to normalize the vector it might sound scary but it really isn't it's actually really easy in unity uh, in unity and uh, what else what it means we will uh, tackle this problem later on so first off go into the scene just create a cube uh cube flatten it out color ground just flatten it, it out by uh, first off, resetting the form, uh, the, the transform, and then just typing in 10 by 10 on the X and Z uh, axis. After that, you want to create a player. Create a player, man. Uh, call a player. There you go. Always reset. Pull it up. There you go. Uh, that's fine. Just give it some color, just so it looks uh, nice and dandy. Player, give it a rigid body. There you go and apply gravity. Remember to have this uh, check mark on. Uh, what else? Freeze, freeze rotation. We don't want this to fall or anything. So let's just and then create this script called movement. I've already created. I think I'm just going to delete it. Yeah. Bu -bu -bu. Let's just do this together. We're going to create a script called movement. Yes. And since you added it, it uh, as a component right here, it's going to attach uh, attach it to the player uh, immediately. So double click on this movement, and then let's start scripting a code, new programming man. Okay, first off, what we we are going to declare three variables. So the first one is a public uh, float move speed, and that is just uh, how fast it's going to travel. So that will be five units. Uh, per second. Uh, what else? We want to store our movement in a vector free. So let's just say vector free. Since we're working with uh, 3D graphics, so it's vector free movement. And here we are going to store our our input from the uh, from the horizontal and the vertical axis. And last but not least, we're going to uh, reference our rigid body. So let's initialize our rigid body. RP equals get component, get component, and then type in rigid body. What type of component do we want to get? Rigid body. Close it up with two parentheses, and that's it. And in the update, uh, this is the update method. It's going to be called every 60 second, oh, uh, 60 times per second. Um, or basically just 60 frames per second. First off, we're going to um, store our input X. Mm, what is it? We're going to store the information that we get whenever we're pressing down uh, the arrow keys or the WASD keys uh, and store it in some sort of, of a vector. And we've already created this here. So we're going to store the movement.x in input. So any input that we get on the on the x-axis, we're going to store it in this variable. This is a local variable, so it means that it isn't global, which also means that other other methods cannot access this uh, this local variable. By the way, input that get access raw. We want to get access raw. Now Unity already has this uh, built in, so just type in hurry, not like that, but horizontal. Always, whenever you are writing a few lines of code, just go in and test it, just so you don't get any errors. Nope, we don't, and it falls perfect. Oh no, I hope I don't fall. So basically, uh, if you get any error right here, then it's because you did type this correctly. Make sure you type it correctly with the first letter being in upcase. And then uh, we also want to store the movement of the Z. So basically, whenever we are moving forward uh, or backward, uh, or to the left or the right, input that input that get axis raw vertical. There you go. 
So now we've stored uh, our input. Now we want to use this input. So like I said before, uh, RidgeBody has a built-in function called move position. So we're going to take our uh, our position. So the rigid body's position plus our movement, which is the input. Uh, so our position plus the input. Are we are we typing? Are we letting our player? Uh, I mean, are we going forward or where are we going? Movement. So all of these are going to be stored in this uh, plus movement times, and then how fast are we going with a magnitude? Five, I think that is what it is. So let's see what it does. Nope, it doesn't let us do anything. Oh, move speed. It still does not let us. Wait, what is it doing? There you go. So let's just test it out. Always remember to like test it, testing stuff. So you see, we fly around like Lightning McQueen, man. This is not what we want. So basically, why why it does this is it takes the input and then times it by sixty every, uh, every frame. Uh, no, uh, sixty frames per second. So it actually runs this uh, this line of code sixty times in a sexy, in a second. That's that is why it is moving uh, sixty units at a time. But let's. Uh, Type in time delta time. That basically means that we want to uh, that we want to move. Uh, what is it called? Uh, five units per second. So this is just uh, us moving five units per second. Let's see if it actually works. It does. So there you go. I'm just press down the WASD or the arrow keys and see if it works. And we can also fall off. Yeah. Okay, so let's try again. Uh, one thing I want to show you is that basically when you're going to the left or the right, it works perfectly back and forth. But look at this when I go like uh, when I'm moving across the whole uh, it moving, it's moving really fast. Now, why is that? That is why we need to normalize our vector. And it's actually really easy. Uh, it just means that we keep uh, the, the magnitude so it doesn't change anything uh, it just stays the same if, if I've understood that correctly um, so uh, we always want our magnitude to be one Let me just... you see so our, our direction is always the same but uh, the magnitude actually changes if I'm not mistaken so we're going to to so all, we always want to have our magnitude to be one. So how can we do that? It's really easy. Just add the vector free that movement. Just type in dot normalize. See, go back to the game. Oh, always remember to like save your scripts. Now, if we go across, it's just going to keep the same speed. Isn't that just nice? Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and comment down below. See you on the next one.